We have been reading the data from the microcontroller, but as far as we have been, we are just reading the actual data read by the microcontroller on the ADC. However, this time we would like to add a new plot to see the time data. So let's connect and start ADC, and we will be visualizing how the data is moving through time. So if I move a little bit this potentiometer, you can see that the value will change with time and we will be able to visualize it. And not only that, because sometimes to not make it stack, we can also select, we will be selecting how long we would like the period of visualization. So here I put it at 30 seconds. So quite soon we will start seeing the data moving like this. So if you want to create a plot chart of the data coming from your microcontroller, this is your tutorial. Welcome to the view. This tutorial is a part of the Python project we started a few videos ago to control and communicate with a microcontroller. This tutorial will be focusing on adding a plot for the data streamed from a microcontroller. So the code is available on GitHub. You can just follow this video and then download the code. So we will be using only Python for this code and the text editor will be VS Code. And finally, even though the, um, the level here is a little bit intermediate, I will try my best to explain how the code is working. If you still have a question, you just put me a comment. I will be happy to follow up with you. So for the hardware, we are going to use the STM32F1 board or the AKA Blue Pill. And as this board does not have an um, direct FTDI for the UART communication with the PC, we will need to add this FTDI. But if you do have an Arduino, you would not need to have this board with this small chip because the, this is already integrated in the Arduino board. Finally, we will add a variable resistance or a potentiometer, and this is to visualize better how the plot is working. So for the tutorial, first of all, we will see the required libraries for Python and the code logic like kind of an overview. After that, we will take a look on the previous Python code and we will review it. And this is more for you guys to understand what we have been going on if you just started and to understand what we are going to put on top of that. After that, we will go update the main GUI. So we will see, you will see the change and how we are going to change the main GUI so we get a new one. Then we will adjust the new root. The root is also the GUI for the data stream, how we will change some function. And then we will review the chart update function. So there is a function that will update the chart and we will see how this is working. And finally, we will review the data stream in the serial data, which is one of the main core in one of the main thread that updating the data. So let's take a look now on the required library and the code logic. So for the required library in Python, we will need the Tinker library, which is a Python standard, also the threading, signal, and time library. All these libraries are Python standards, so we don't need to import nothing. Then there's a PySerial py, um, library, which is one that you have to download using pip, and this is the pip on cell PySerial, and also the matplotlib that you need also to, to download. For the STM32F1, there is a few libraries that we added here, and this library we have been creating together in the STM32F1 tutorial. So all these libraries are available also with the code in the um, in the GitHub. And if you would like to learn more, I will add the link in the description if you would like to learn. But if you do have an Arduino, I will explain later on how to use it. Okay, so this is our circuit in general. We will have our microcontroller and it will be connected to the potentiometer. We will be using the pin PA0, which we will define as um, an, an ADC source. And after that, we will connect to the ATPI using QR2, and then we will connect to the PC. And actually, the microcontroller will be streaming this data, UART message, and then ADC value, what will be the value of the um, the microcontroller, uh, actually the um, analog digital converter, plus, which is extremely important, the slash N or the new line. That's extremely important. So if you do have an Arduino and you would like to make the same test, you just have to stream the value and you have to add the new line. It's quite important within your code so the 
program at the Python will be reading the data and understanding how to show it. Now let's take a look further on the Python program, how it will work. So I've, as, we, as we have said previously, it's, there's a main thread where we are going to use and manage the GUI. This is just for the button and also the, just the internal organization and management of the GUI. And we are adding an extra thread. This is to get you our data. Because if we don't use this thread to get the data, your GUI will be quite die or quite stuck on just reading the data. And finally, we are adding a third thread We'll update some animation to see the actual value of the ADC. But based on that, when we are getting the UART data, we will be also updating within the same thread the plot update, means the X and Y that we are going to plot, that will be updated within that thread. However, the thread for the plotting must be, I repeat again, must be within the main thread. It should not be in a different thread. And based on that, we have all, this is the logic of our program that we will start to use and make the plotting. Okay, so we had an overview, we know our library. So now let's take a look on the previous program and we will see how to build on top of it. This is our previous program and we are going to take a look how it works. So let me here run it. This is the previous one that we created together. So let me go to the terminal and run it. So I do have this GUI appearing like this. And you can see this is a GUI with the connect button, which is not enabled and available port that we can refresh and get the connected avail port to uh, my computer. So here we do have the COM3. And for the board rate, as I set up in my microcontroller, is the 115,200. Okay, and I will, when I will push the connect, it will show me a pin high, and this is to toggle a certain pin, whatever I want, and start reading the data through the ADC. So for the pin high here, you will see, you see this LED, it's connected directly to the pin um, port C, pin 13, and it's the high, the um, it will be low, the, the pin will be, the LED will be high when the pin will be low and vice versa. So if I go to the pin and make it high, it will go low for the LED and the opposite. And this is the first function we created uh, in the previous tutorial. And if I put start ADC, I will start reading the data and you can see when I be moving my potentiometer, the a graph or the canvas will be showing exactly the real value with some kind of a nice graphic to see. And then after that, I can stop and keep toggling. I can use both at the same time. Okay, so this is the program and this is, uh, this is actually how it works. And quickly to go through it, so the signal handler is single uh, signal handler and signal signal are two things you don't need to focus on are used to manage the threading and sometimes there's issue with threading if i just stop like this so that's one of the reason we are using them this class graphics is the one is the class managing this graph so we are putting a lot of data inside it so we don't need to transport um, all the time a lot of variables Toggle pin is a function that manages how the pin is toggling. Get ADC is the function managing what would happen when I click on the stop ADC. Then the connect menu in it function is the one managing all what we see here. In the other way, it's not really going doing any programming logic or any algorithmic, it's just saying we need this um, here, this label and this label and this menu and this button. This is the connect menu, it's just where we put all the element. Then the connect check is the one. So let me put disconnect here. Is the one putting if I don't select this, for example, available port, I'm not able to connect. That's the function that manage or when I connect, I can't push neither of this uh, button. After that, the boat rate is the one generating the list of the boats and update comms is a function that will update the comms that we need for the connection. So each time I connect 
and I push the refresh, it will generate to me the list of connected comps to my PC. Then the graph control is the function which managing this canvas or this animation. So the graph control is the function managing this. It's not the function managing the data, but the position of the this cursor and the writing the text that we see here. Connection is the one that the, the one uh, sorry before that read serial is the function working through a specific uh, um, threading that get the data and read it and also manage it to send and start the function to update this one. Where connection here is the function that manage what we will see and we don't see before clicking on connect. Then finally, close window is the function that manage also the threading when we exit the function. At the end, we do have here the connect menu in it. So the function that will put all the, what we see as widget here, then the root protocol, when we delete the window or we close it, there is here, and that will manage how to close all the threading because you see here, I'm reading data. My serial is working through a certain threading and I need to stop it before closing my program. Finally, the root main loop is the one that runs the GUI. I hope it was uh, clear for you guys. Any question, you can take a look to the previous tutorials or send me a question in the description area. So from this part, we are going to see the new program, but to understand it better and how it's working by respect to the people who are uh, reviewing the previous tutorial and putting the old program in the right and the new program to the left to see what, how, what has been added up and what is the reason we have done like this. So first of all, and first important thing that we are adding from library perspective, here we start adding the matplotlib library, and this is for the plots, and also the matplotlib backend, backend tkag, using the figure canvas tkag and also the navigation toolbar tk. And this is extremely important to add because this is the one that will be putting the figure of the matplotlib inside the widget that will be used in the tkinter. This is the first step. After that, let's go to the init one here, and let's go to the init here and see the difference. So the first difference I have been adding, and this is to change a little bit the geometry of the root and to make it a little bit more friendly user. So this is the, we make it smaller here. So let's take a look to the root, let me run it. And now you can see our root is much smaller and better, so it's quite visually better. Okay, that's, that's not very important, but for some people, yes. So after that, we added this time also the plot or the widget for the plot. So if we go to the end of this um, function here, let's go here, and we are going to use, so we didn't have, we stopped at the bottom here that we stopped. So let's go bigger here. So the first two lines are pure matplotlib. So people who are used, that's very simple. But then we need to create our widget using this figure canvas TKK. And after that, put everything inside this chart to and a grid. Within this grid, we are putting it inside our root GUI. But we are going to remove it because we don't need it for this moment. Plus, I'm adding the plotting variable. So we do have the X data and Y data, and this is the one where we are going to put everything where the X and Y only are the only parcel or a segment that we will be showing, and I will explain later on why we divide the two. Okay, so this is the part for the what we updated in the initialization. So let's go now to check what also some small change of improvement or improvement to the GUI we have done. So let's go to the connection and see what we have done to the connection. So in the previous tutorial, as soon as we click on the connection, we do have see the uh, canvas that do the animation, but this time, what we are going to do is not showing the canvas for the animation. So as we can, you can see here, the canvas for the grid, and also we hide in it here. We are removing that, but we are just adjusting what we are going to add. Also, adjusting the root geometry 
to the size because we're just adding the bottom. So we, if we go here again and we go connect here, what will happen is the size will go a little bit bigger here and we can see the bottom. So we change it one just to have a more friendly uh, interface. Okay, that's a small part, but I wanted to notify to you so you can understand what's going on. Okay, so after that, we are going to get ADC. So let's go back again to this one. And what is important and the change is when we click on the start ADC. So let's go to the start ADC or get ADC and take a look to the difference for both old and new. So first of all, let's follow the number because it's very important. Let's go here. And what we are going to do is to display the canvas also display the chart that we do have and what we are going to also display change is the geometry of the um, the main GUI also here in this is if we would like to connect we are going to display this and if we would like to hide we are going to remove everything and get back to my root geometry then so that was four or five this step is extremely important because this is will manage how the graph will show the time. So what we are going to do is check if my len of the x data, which is here, we are going to use as a time, is equal to zero. So if I don't have data yet, I will take this as my referential time and start counting my time from that moment. And or if I have written some data before, my reference time will be against last time we changed it. And this is kind of creating a time point that we will use later on inside our graph. Then finally, as a six, we are going to check and go for update the chart. So this function will start updating the chart and displaying it. So let's take a look quickly to chart update, which is a function that was not in the previous tutorial. So we can hide here and go to update chart. Update chart is a very simple one. It's the function that first we start by ex clear. We clear everything. If you don't put this one, what will happen, it will be piling up the chart inside your plot. So be careful. And then we are going to plot x and y. We will see later on how we are going to build the x and y. And here I'm just adding the grid, what kind of grid I would like to do. And Finally, the function to draw. And this function will show us a new chart. And if we do have a serial data or we are reading the data, then what we will do, so the serial data, this is a function we, this is actually a variable that can be true or false. And this is a variable that changed. So let's go quickly to the get, where is it? The get, yeah, get ATC. This one get true or false. Where is my um, data like here? Get true or false depending on pushing the bottom. So it's a very important one that we are changing true or false. So if I put start ADC, it will become true. Or if when I put stop ADC, it will become false and stop this function. So this function here for the chart will be running. So root after, so it's 250 seconds, it will run again this update chart. I'm putting 250. Depends on the fla your flavor and your PC. You can in increase it if you feel that your PC is not really that powerful or decrease it if you do have a very strong PC. But 250 w worked like a charm for me. Okay, so this is how this update chart goes. And this is within the main thread. Then comes the last part and the most important one, which is updating the data. And this is inside the read serial. So first, I would like to show you both here. Let's close this one and go to read serial. And this is a chunk of data we have added here on top. So this is the previous read serial where we just update the um, canvas and get the new data. So just like this and explain what's going on. And by the way, very important remark, there is very 
you have to be very careful about the global data because that's the data that will travel. And the X and Y here and referential time are the one traveling from the ADC get to the serial data. So let's go here. So this program in general will get the data, make an average, and then will after the averaging will start loading and showing it to you to the user. So here what we are going to do and first is read the Y data or the data that we will put in the Y axis. After that, if the length of the X data is not equal to zero, then I will start update. So I will take my time, the new time, minus the referential time that we set up. So we really start almost at zero. After that, we will get the length of the Y data and the X data and we our print range here so the print range for the moment is equal zero we don't care about it it's another variable but the time range which is important is how many seconds i would like to see 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds it will be moving within the time and after that all the rest here most of it will be checking if i am re having the time range within the 30 second or not. So what I'm doing here is to check if my last data, the length of the X data minus the time series that I have is greater than the time range. If it is, I'll be getting here, you see here the print range is how many value within the X and that I have. So this is, I'm running inside the whole time series inside my X data because each time I'll be adding the new time, the new time, and what I'm, the, I'm be going, I'll take the last one, like the the final one, and I'll be going minus one, minus one, and confirm until when it's bigger than time range. And I will break if it's bigger. So if my the length of the X data is equal to the print range, the one like equal to zero, then we just put X is the X data, uh, sorry, y is the y data and x is the x data. Else, if this is different, if this is different, then we will take only the portion, only the portion that will be having 30 seconds of time. And this is what will create a display of 30 seconds, moving 30 seconds. And both for x and y at the same time. So this one will be updating each time the x data and y data and then the X and Y. And at the same time, as we have seen, we will have here the update chart will be taking the X and Y here and will be plotting them. So let's take a look on the final result. So as soon as I start here checking the, the one here, the display, so you can see I'm start running here and reading the data. And you can see there's a big variation, but it's between 2000, like it's really small variation here. It's between like 2264 millivolt and 2267 millivolts. It's a very small gap. And if I start moving here, you can see, oh, sorry, let me show you. I forgot to add the display like this show you here I will be moving my potentiometer and you can see that the data is moving and now you can see also and you can figure out that now I do have around 30 seconds of time interval that is driving my plot so that was the whole picture that we do have so we do have a direct and or how to say a picture of my actual value plus what is going on within the chart. And you can see that you can control how long you'd like to have, plus kind of we still have the control here for the toggling the pin. We can toggle the pin. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you for the next one.